Hello everyone, welcome back to another Adobe Photoshop tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to intertwine an object or basically text in an object in this case, or some people call this overlapping technique. It's very easy to do. It should only take us two minutes or so. Start your timer. Let's get cracking. We're going to go step by step. All right, so once you opened up an artboard of any size, the first step here is I'm going to go grab my text tool and we're going to do the same thing I did in the last one. I'm going to just type my name in here, Curtis. Off we go, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just center this. This is a large Lato bold font. You can use whatever you want, but I wanna make it nice and big so you can see it. Okay, good stuff. The next step is simple. Go to your Finder on a Mac, your Explorer on a PC, and simply just grab the object that you want to intertwine it with. In this case, it's a long piece of rope here I'm gonna use. I'm just gonna click on okay, and boom, we've placed the rope. Now the rope isn't quite as long as my name here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and increase the size a little bit. I'm gonna hold down the shift key to make it proportional. It's optional, of course, but there you go, something like that, and bang, I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. Now we've got some white outside of the subject here, or outside of, or object in this case. What you can do now is go to your left side here, grab the quick selection tool, then go to the top under select subject. You should see it at the top here. You can select device or cloud. I'm gonna select cloud. And then I'm just gonna simply click select subject. And this will do an excellent job selecting the subject or the object that we're working with. Now I'm gonna to go to the bottom right side and I'm gonna go ahead and click on add layer mask. When I do that, we've isolated the rope. We are on our way. All right, the next step here is making sure you're still selected on that layer. I'm just gonna right click. There's the thumbnail here, and then there's the mask that we just created. And then outside the mask, on the right side of the mask, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna convert this into a smart object. The reason why we're doing that is because I'm gonna add another mask to it. So there we go, we've gone ahead and converted it, <clears throat> excuse me, into a smart object. Okay, the next step is purely optional, but I wanna show it to you because it can add quite a bit of production value if this is what you're going for. Selecting on our smart object rope, I'm gonna go up here to edit and then I'm gonna to go to Puppet Warp. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a couple of pins. I'm just gonna create, and you'll notice here that I'm placing them pretty close to the middle of the rope. And that's just because I don't want it to be, uh, I don't want it to get like all distended looking or anything like that. But basically I'm just going ahead and creating a bunch of pins. And now, now I've got these pins, I could just make some subtle adjustments. So if I push this pin up a little bit, maybe I'll push this one down a little bit and then I'll push this one maybe up a little more, et cetera. We've gone ahead and added in a little bit of a cool little effect where it's kind of like an undulating or wavy warp a rope, pardon me, as opposed to just a straight rope. Again, this is purely optional. It's done with the puppet warp. Once that's done, I'm just gonna click out here. I'm gonna grab my, I'm gonna apply this. And now we're gonna go into the last step here. Okay, the last step is very simple. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this layer mask button again, making sure I'm selected on the rope or the intertwining object that you're using. Click on add layer mask. And now before I go ahead and paint anything onto this mask, I'm gonna click back on the original text here and I'm gonna hold down the command key on a Mac, control key on a PC, and I'm gonna just left click on the text or right here on the thumbnail. And when I do that, when I zoom in, you're gonna see that it's selected the text for me. The reason why we're doing that is because when I paint in the intertwining, I can now only paint in those lines. So if I start painting outside the lines, it won't matter. So now I'm gonna click back on the top layer I'm gonna to go to the left side, I'm gonna grab a brush, I'm gonna make sure that my foreground is black and now watch this. I'm just gonna paint out and if I paint all over the place, I've got, the, I've got my finger down here, it doesn't matter because we're in the lines and only in the lines. So there we go. This one's under, this one will go over. This one will go under, this one will go over. This one will go under and over and then under. And then if we zoom out and take a look, this is a perfectly intertwined, actually I'll select, deselect. This is a perfectly intertwined piece of work here, guys. That's how you do it. Thanks for watching.